Okay, welcome to the sixth video on clinical reasoning, and this one is about sensitivity, specificity, and predictive values. And here is the framework that we use for uh, clinical reasoning. And these these uh, things fall in this box here. It's going to help us with understanding tests and understanding uh, the pretest and post-test probability. Uh, the objectives are to to know the definitions for sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value, to know them intuitively, but also to know how to calculate them. And these are the formulas, and this is the table, and don't worry, we're gonna go through what this table means in this video. In a subsequent video, we're gonna talk about how you're gonna use this to apply it to a patient. And so, let's, uh, we're gonna talk now about testing for disease. So let's say we have a population here, of, uh, or a sample of 10 patients. Right? and some of them have a disease. We don't know which ones have the disease, and the diseased ones here are marked with orange heads. Okay, and so the prevalence of disease in this population, we'll learn about prevalence in your, in your evidence-based medicine course, but is four over 10. Four of them have disease out of 10, so 40%. And we also have a test that can test the disease, and the test is either gonna be positive, hopefully if they have the disease, and negative if they don't have the disease. And so a perfect test would do just that. Whenever the patient has a disease, the test is positive, as in these cases. And when the test is negative, they don't have the disease. However, there is no such thing as a perfect test. There's, uh, there's always going to be problems with that. So you can see here, here's a person who has a disease and the test came out negative, and here's a person who has, does not have the disease and the test came back positive. So when you have a patient who has the disease and the test is positive, this positive is called a true positive because it's true because the patient actually does have the disease. And when a test is negative and the patient doesn't have the disease, uh, that negative there is a true negative because the patient truly does not have the disease. But that leaves these two cases here, these two mistakes, as you might say, and these are false. So this is negative, but it's falsely so, right? Because the patient has a disease. And this one, this test was positive, but it's falsely so because this patient does not have the disease. So you can have a perfectly bad test, right? Like if it was completely the wrong way, but of course that as well is never gonna happen. And so how do we measure the quality of a test? So how do we measure how, how many times it comes back false, falsely positive or negative and truly positive or negative? That's when we are going to use this two by two table to figure that out. And so the two by two table has on one side, and traditionally on this, um, on the left side, we have the results of a test. So you can see here's our test tube, and there's a positive and negative. And then on the top, you have the patient. And so whether they have the disease or whether they are healthy. And so we said, look, if the test is positive and they have the disease, that's considered a true positive. And then if the test is negative and they are healthy, that, um, is considered a true negative. When the test is positive and they're diseased, I think I said healthy, but when they're diseased, that's considered a true positive. And again, similarly, we can put false negative and false positives in here too. And so if you add up the true positives and the false positives, that's all the times that this was positive. And if you add up all the, the false negatives and the true negatives, that's all the times that the test was negative. And similarly, you, could, you can add up all the healthy patients and all the diseased patients, right? And that's the true positives and the false negatives for the diseased and the false positives and the true negatives for the healthy patients. So how often does a positive test pick up a patient with the disease? That's what we wanna know. So how often does a positive test pick up a patient with a disease? And so that is how sensitive is a test at picking up disease? And the way we calculate that is by looking at uh, a positive test right here true positives and how often does it pick up the patients with the, the disease well it picked it up the true positives and how many did it miss it missed the false negatives so it's the true positives over all of the diseased patients that's the sensitivity how often does a negative test pick up a patient without the disease so these are all the patients without the disease and how often does this negative test pick up the patients without the disease well, how spe that's the same thing as asking, how specific is a test at isolating a disease? And so it's the same thing right here, right? We take the true negatives over all the patients who are healthy. So true negatives over all the patients who are healthy. And so you get, uh, that's called specificity. Now we can look at this from a different way and we could say, how often is a disease 
is it how often is a diseased person picked up by a positive test? So we have this positive test. Whenever you have a positive test, all of the positives, how often does that patient actually have a disease? And that is asking what is the predictive value of a positive test? And so that means we have our true positives, right? Over all positives. Because we said of all the positives, how often does that pick up a diseased patient? So that's our true positives over all positives. And that's called the positive predictive value. And we could ask the converse of that is how often is a healthy person picked up by a negative test? So here are all our negatives, right? So we're asking again, what is the predictive value of a negative test? Spell that wrong there. Uh, and so we're, we say, okay, well, we look at all our negatives, right? And all our negatives are the false negatives and the true negatives. Uh, and we're looking at the true negatives. So that's all the, the negatives. How many of them are actually healthy? Well, the true negatives. So true negatives over all negatives. And that's the negative predictive value. And so from this, this uh, example that we had before, let's fill in numbers. So how many true positives were there? One, two, three. So we put three here. And then how many false positives were there? Well, just this one right here. So that's our false positive. So it's one here. So how many times was it positive? four times one two three four and that's the same as three plus one equals four let's do the same thing with negatives how many negatives were there one two three four five six six were negative how many true negatives one two three four five five were true negatives and how many false negatives this one right here this was negative but falsely so so one so one plus five equals six and um Four plus six equals 10. And then you should be able to add them up actually down this way too. How many diseased patients were there? There were four diseased patients. Three of them had a positive test. One of them had a false negative test. How many healthy patients were there? There were six healthy patients. Uh, five of them had a negative test and one of them had a false positive test. And so we can calculate the sensitivity. The sensitivity we said was three with the number of, tr of uh, true positives over all of the diseased patients over four. So three over four is 75%. And the specificity is the true negatives, all of the patients that did not have the disease that had a negative test over all the healthy patients. And so that's five over six. Five sixths is about 83%. Similarly, we can calculate the positive predictive value. And the positive predictive value is uh, calculated uh, this way across the table. And so when you have a positive test, how often does it pick up a diseased patient? Well, all positives is four, so that's our denominator. And true positives is our numerator, so three over four, 75%. And similarly, for the negative predictive value, we take our true negatives over all negatives, and we get 83%. Now, in this case, it just happens to be the sensitivity and the specificity numbers are the exact same, just because I randomly pick numbers that are going to be the same, but that is rarely the case. And so, again, here is our table now that we came up with. I just took out the false positives and false negatives and true positives and true negatives and re uh, replaced them with these letters because this is a common convention you'll see using these letters in a 2x2 two two table, A, B, C, D. Personally, I think it's better to understand what you're calculating rather than memorizing letters, but some people prefer to do it this way, so I'm providing that with you here for you. Now you might be asking, what's with the pig and why has it got a basketball? Uh, and so we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but let's let's talk about it now. So it's it's the pig with the basketball to remember these this mnemonic spin and snout. And so what that means is a t test with a high sensitivity. If it's negative, you've ruled out a disease. Okay. A, high, a test with a high specificity. If it's positive, helps you rule in a disease. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but I just wanted to introduce spin and snout and our little basketball playing pig as well. Uh, and that's it for this video. So, uh, oh yeah, one more thing over here, you can see you wanna, when you wanna rule out a disease, that's when you're gonna trash it. So you want a test that has a good sensitivity to help you trash a disease. Uh, you want a disease with, or you want a test with a good specificity to help you rule in a disease if you wanna treat it. And so that's how sensitivity and specificity will fit in here. And so thank you for watching.